this is the selvage edge of this lace and if you can see this scalloped edge I'm actually going to cut along a scallop and so I won't hem my sleeve this edge this pretty scalloped edge will be the hem of my sleeve so it actually cuts out a step but it also makes it a little more interesting and you'll see that play out as we um, go to cut out the pattern all right so I'm going to go to the edge um, and let me just show you real quick this is one edge of the selvage and this is the other see that so I'm going to actually cut my sleeves with this on the edge on both ends when I go to cut it out. So I'm going to first, and you could do this secondly, but I'm going to do this first because I know exactly where the length of my sleeve is going to end because it's going to be the scalp. So I'm going to trim. I get kind of close here. Can you see the little strings? I'm going to get as close as I can without hitting the actual scallop, and I can always go back and trim it. I'm using my good gingers right now but I'm going to switch to another scissor just so you can see the difference depending on the scissor you use. Okay, so that's using the ginger. This is the um, applique scissors or the duckbill scissor. And Alright, so I'm just cutting the strings. Now you can see the little eyelashes there. But those are easy to go back and trim off. Okay, I'm going to lay this down just so you can see how pretty that looks. See the edge, the scalp edge? So that will be my sleeve edge. If you're doing a skirt, this could be your skirt edge. This could be the hem of your blouse. So that's one neat thing about this uh, type of fabric. So I'm going to trim this up and show you the whole thing. Whenever I sew with a pattern, the very first thing you do is prep your material. So I'm going to show you how I prep my pattern. Um, a lot of times I will also prep my fabric, but because we're sewing with knit this time, if you wash and dry lightweight knit like this, it actually rolls up and becomes very difficult to control when cutting out. So I seldom will pre-shrink knit even if it is cotton this is part part cotton knit um, it has synthetics in with it but I will not pre-shrink this just because it becomes too difficult to cut out if I were using a cotton flannel it's vital you um, wash and dry it like you plan on doing it after the garments constructed or it will shrink enough that your garment won't fit with knits because of the just the way the fabrics made and the fiber content it's less of an issue so I'm going to pull out my um, innards and I'm going to figure out which which um, one I'm doing and then find out what pattern pieces I need so I'm thinking I'm going to either do B or E on the back of the pattern if it's for knits it's going to have this little diagram and it shows how far I'm going to flip it over because it's actually the words are upside down how far the fabric should stretch so if the fabric um, unstretched is here when you pull it it should stretch that far this is just to help you know that you're buying the right fabric for your knit pattern so and it can stretch farther but it needs to be at least that much so here my first pattern piece this is an asymmetrical pattern so um, because of that it can't be cut on the fold on the center front or center back so you have one big wide piece so this is the front for pattern uh, for style B or E, it's written on there, and then it has its sizes, and I know it's going to be hard to see in the camera, but I'm going to do my best. Um, some pattern companies just have straight lines. This one actually has for each size a different type of line, so we have a small dotted line, a long dashed line, and the solid line for our different sizes. That makes it a little easier for you to cut it out, so I'm going to pull it apart and figure this out. All right, so here are the pattern pieces that I need for this um, project. I've got my sleeve, my neck band, my front and my back. So there's just four pieces that I'm going to be cutting out. Um, all I've done so far is just separate the pieces that I need from all of the pieces that I don't need. Over there, there's my pile of discards. So I'm going to now cut these out on the size that I need and there aren't standardization in the industry either so if you go to the store 
and you buy a size 12 and then you go to the pattern company and you buy, want to buy a size 12, they're not the same at all. And even from pattern company to pattern company, they won't be the same size. So you really need to read the measurements to get your, the size that you need. Um, for me, I'm going to be doing a large um, on this one, which is the small dotted line. Make sure you have your fabrics, or you're not using fabric scissors, but some cheap paper scissors like this. And now I'm going to cut it on the size that I need, and I'm going to cut it out exactly. Some people go ahead and just pin it down um, without cutting it to the exact size, and that's where mistakes are made. It's easy to get off one line and cut your whole project out wrong. If you make the mistake in the paper, you can always tape it back together. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut it out for my exact size. Well, I wasn't kidding about cutting it out first before you go to the um, fabric because I did it on my very first pattern piece. This pattern, and I want to show you how easy it is to fix, this pattern had two different cutting lines for your arm eye depending on if you were going sleeveless or with a sleeve. And I just cut right through for sleeveless, but I am putting in a sleeve. And if I had chosen the other one, it would have made my sleeve not fit. This, the sleeve was designed to fit into the smaller curve. So I just taped it back together. Now that I have my four pieces cut out, we're gonna go to the iron and press them nice and flat so that I have a very accurate cut. And I'll show you those next. Can you see the wrinkles coming out? And can you see how nice and flat the pattern is becoming? You will get much more accurate cut with a nice flat pattern. Okay, so I was uploading my video um, for the sleeve cutting out and I realized that I didn't have it set for video, I had it set for camera and I just took three still shots, but the sleeve is cut out so I can't reproduce it. So I'm just gonna talk you through what I did. When I laid this out, I folded it in half and um, lined up my scallop edge to scallop edge so I could cut out my right and left sleeve at the same time. Um, I then measured how long I wanted my sleeve to be, so how long I want a short sleeve, not a long sleeve. And my hem is already perfectly done because it's my sleeve, ed my lace edge, so I don't have to worry about hem. So this is exactly how long my sleeve will be, minus the five eighths at the top then measured my right and left of the sleeve to make sure that they would match when I sew them together. And I just did that by using my tape measure and making sure that the edge of each seam line here, cutting line, was the same so that when I sew them together, so I didn't end up with one side short in the scallop and one side long in the scallop. You would end up with an uneven seam under the arm. And we don't want that, so I just did a little, took a few minutes of finagling to get that just right. A couple pins later, and it was cut out. I forgot one more thing. Um, I also, if you sew with notches, notches help you know where to match up your pattern piece to pattern piece. Um, I do not cut the triangle out of the notch. I take my scissors and I carefully slice straight through the triangle. So we move my um, fabric out of the way so that when I do that you get this little cut like that and it's also in the fabric it's harder with lace because it's holy um, with a solid piece when I do my knits it'll be much easier to see but I do one little slice in the front and two little slices in the back that way we can tell our front from our back of our sleeve because the front of the sleeve is shaped different than the back and it will fit differently in the garment it will fit differently in the arm side and it will fit differently on your body um, the circle at the top of the sleeve is to show where the two seams come together and so you know where to line up the center part or it's not it's usually not even center it's usually tilted towards the front because the back of the shoulder is usually longer 
or the back, yeah, the back of the arm side of the sleeve is longer than the front. So um, it's seldom in the center of the sleeve. It's usually shifted towards the front a little bit. So I forgot to put that in there, but um, that's important when you're cutting out. You can cut the triangles if you want to, as long as you have a nice deep seam allowance. If this is a quarter inch seam allowance, you're gonna get pretty close to, um, that's about how deep these triangles are, and you're gonna end up with almost no fabric in the little spots where your little notches are, so. I'm gonna lay out my um, fabric for cutting now. And because I have extra white fabric, and um, it's asymmetrical. Normally you um, fold it in half, selvage edge to selvage edge. This is my selvage edge, and you can see how stretchy my fabric is. Um, but because of the as asymmetry, it will not be folded in half, and I will be cutting my front out and then my back. So I'm just going to lay it flat like this. Make sure there's no fold overs. Lay out our two pieces and see. Now also because this is asymmetrical, we want to make sure that we don't flip our pattern. And I don't mean top to bottom, but I mean um, right side to wrong side. So if you look, and it may be hard to see because they're really faint, here's my number seven and my number six. And they match up like this. If I flip this over, they no longer will match up. So I want to make sure I keep them now, also because this is asymmetrical and I have to do a little finagling, I'm going to pin both pieces before I cut out. We want to make sure we're straight of grain. So I'm going to pull this up. And this is one of those times where you can see they cut the fabric really crooked at the store. And we're going to measure our straight of grain. And if you've never done this, it's very important especially with heavy wovens, because like on a pair of jeans, if you don't get your straight of grain right, um, your pant leg will wrap around your leg and twist. So I'm just gonna put a pin, make sure I'm on my fabric down there. Just do one end of my arrow, I hope you can see that. And I'm going to measure from that arrow straight across to the edge of my fabric, not stretching. And then I'm going to come to this end of the arrow, and it's way off. It needs to be there. Move that so I don't have to stretch my fabric. And I'm going to just pull this until we're on the straighter grain. That looks really crooked when I eyeball it. And it's also pulled my um, little tail off, so I'm going to double check it because sometimes it looks crooked just because the piece is asymmetrical. Okay, I unrolled it at the other end and I didn't at this end, so I did go too far. This acts like a hinge. one piece and now I'm going to pin this one down and then I'll do the next one. You don't want to over pin because it actually causes your fabric to pucker. And I may be able to, just looking at this, uh, keeping it the same direction. And you can only do that if you don't have directional fabric, so I'm just checking this, it is not directional and it doesn't change the stretch, so we probably will do this to get it out. All right, now that that's pinned the way I want it, the way I want it, I just gently fold it, pull,
this is knit and I'm going to just show you. It's real easy to push or to stretch when you're cutting. So that's why you don't want to lift up your fabric. You want your scissors to rest against the surface and gently slide and do slower, smaller cuts so that you don't stretch or push your fabric. Just cut that off so it's easier to work with. All right, so here are my pieces all cut out, and now we're ready to go to the sewing machine. <laughs> 